They'll be demonstrating project number four from the Confident Communicator's Manual, how to say it. He's requested seven minutes to give us, it's not the facts, it's how you position them. Please welcome Dave Redman. Thank you, Mr. Toastmaster, fellow members, and most honored guest. So excited to be here today, another Toastmaster meeting, another Toastmaster speech, although You'd probably rather not be here right now. You'd probably rather be at home or watching TV or something else. Today, I'm going to be talking about some communication techniques. And these techniques can be very helpful for your life. Although the reality is you've probably heard these things before. There's really nothing new here, I'm afraid. I've learned these from a guy named George Walter. Well, let's get started. Or I could have started like this. Good afternoon. Time for another Toastmaster meeting, another fabulous get-together. I want to commend all of you. I want to commend you for being here today because it's proof that you're part of an elite group of people that want to be even more successful. Thank you so much. Today, you're going to be hearing some communication techniques that can benefit your personal life, your business life. You can use them in any capacity to develop better relationships with other people. These are things that you might not have ever heard before. They can make a powerful difference for you. I learned them from one of the world's leading experts in communication, George Walter. Let's get started. Now, do you see a difference? Now, if I would have started with that first introduction, would you have kind of wanted to walk out the door right now? It's not the facts. The facts didn't change. Toastmaster meeting, communication techniques, George Walther. It was how the facts were positioned that made all the difference. And then the next few minutes, you're going to hear three ways you can use to help position facts more effectively that can make a dramatic impact on your life. Let me first tell you a true story that shows the importance of illustrating using facts correctly. Some time ago, a telecommunications company was searching for a candidate to fill the position of head of customer service. And after much deliberation and thousands of applicants, they narrowed down to two finalists. Two finalists. And now was a day where the finalists were in the boardroom. They were going to be interviewed by the board members. And after that interview, the board was going to determine who was going to get the job of head of customer service. Now, neither of these candidates had any technical background. Both candidates were given two days to prepare for the interview. They were sent all the interview questions two days in advance. There was a man and a woman competing for the job. Now, first they started with the man. And before he was asked questions, he said, I just want to tell everyone here, I really appreciate have being given two days to prepare for the interview. I really appreciate that. Two days was ample time to get ready, exactly what I needed. Also, I want to commend your organization because, as you know, I don't have any kind of technical background. I worked in financial services. However, it's obvious that you're wanting to bring in fresh new ideas. So I really appreciate the fact that you're considering me for the job. And then he went on to answer the questions and did a very good job. And then the second candidate came in, the woman. And she started with something like this. Well, I just want to tell you that two days was not a lot of time to prepare, although I'll do the best I can with the time you provided me. Also, I want to say that I don't have any technical background, but I am going to do the best I can with the skills that I have. And then she went on to answer the questions and did a good job. Now, who do you think got the job? The man got the job. Again, the facts were the same, but it was how he positioned them. And sometimes, just one word can make all the difference. For example, Dennis, if you could please rise. I'd like to introduce all of you to Dennis Haining. Dennis, fabulous Toastmaster, successful business executive, but Dennis wears glasses. Or, I'd like to introduce all of you to Dennis Haney. Dennis, successful Toastmaster, 
successful businessman and Dennis first class. Just one word, three letters. Thank you, Dennis. And if I want to build cooperation with Dennis and build rapport, it would be more apropos to say and rather than but. Now another technique that's very powerful if you want to project a positive image to someone else. And how many times have you heard this phrase, I have to, I have to, I have to. I hear this a lot when I call customer service companies, or I want to get customer service. In fact, I used to work at a company, and when I used to call the help desk, did you hear this a lot when you, when you call help desk? Thank you, Dave, for the question. I appreciate it. What I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to check with Mr. Brown, and then I'm going to have to figure out the problem. I'll have to then call you back. What about this? Thank you, Dave, so much for the question. I'll be glad to check with Mr. Brown, and then I'll be happy to call you back with an answer. You see, when you say, I'll be happy to, instead of I have to, not only are you giving the listener a boost, but you give yourself a boost. Imagine saying, I have to, 50, 100 times a day. It kind of pushes you down. But it makes all the difference, just one word. And another technique, which is very powerful to build cooperation with others. For example, Jessica, let me ask you a question. What sports team in the NCAA do you think is the best at football in the country? Really, or my, my opinion? Really. <laughs> <laughs> Alabama. I disagree. Now, if you can see her face, she's smiling, <laughs> but she's not very happy. <laughs> when you hear, I disagree, you if, you hear, if you hear, I disagree, don't you think you're hearing, you're wrong? But a lot of times, it's not, you're wrong, I'm right. It's what you have to say has some merit, and what I have to say may have some merit. And if we put our heads together, there might be a third alternative that's even more powerful. So instead of, I disagree, what about, I understand what you're saying, and let's consider some additional information. So to sum up, it's not the facts, it's how you position them that make all the difference. Instead of using the word but, try and. Instead of I have to, try I'll be happy to. And instead of I disagree, try I understand what you're saying. And there's some additional information that we can consider. You're going to be receiving a handout that summarizes these techniques. And I'll leave you with these words, paraphrased from Proverbs 25:11. Like apples of gold in settings of silver, so is the right word said in the right circumstance. Mr. Toastmaster.